Salutations, Niaja. <clears throat> and anyone else watching the YouTube universe. This is our second, um, well, this is um, this, well, yeah, it's the second video in a sequence of <clears throat> it will be two videos, second part to our videos on sentence writing. And so this is a fundamental review. If you follow, if, I mean, this is actually roll call. Who's gifted? Who's talented? Who is brilliant? Who is wise? Who is blessed from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet? You are. That's right. So you're amazing. And this is really just a review. This is stuff that you probably, if you're in the fourth grade, this is stuff that they have worked toward in K through three. So you should be doing this very diligently and very easily. In the last, um, in the last video that I did in part one, we looked at subject and predicate. So now we're going to build out just a little bit more and not necessarily get into the technical terms or the grammatical terms, but we are going to look at how do we use the five W's to make more descriptive sentences. So in this point, now there are a number of different ways that you could kind of look at the components of a sentence, but we're going to keep it as simple as possible. And we're just looking at does each sentence meet the basic five W's? And it may not have all five W's and H. So it would, and how. So it would be who, what, when, where, why, and how. Okay. So you can use any one of those options to add details to your sentence. Okay. So you want your details to, you want your sentences to be descriptive and comprehensive and make sure that it's clear so that people understand. So when we read, you know, sometimes Neanja, when we read and we're doing reading comprehension and I kind of say, well, why do you think the writer would have told us that? Like, why would the author tell us that? Why would he share that information? Or why would the illustrator use that picture? Why are they kind of honing in on that fact? How does that add relevance to what we're reading about? Well, it's the same thing. The more you write, you're going to want to add emphasis or you're going to want to be able to say, hmm, that's not really what I meant. I want to make sure that you understand what I say. So author's purpose is the why. Like, why is that information being shared? Or why is that particular thing being um information being presented. So now author's purpose also determines the context. We talk about context clues and we say like, well, what are context clues? Context clues are the details surrounding the central idea. So even in a sentence, believe it or not, there is a central idea. There's a reason that that sentence was written. So then you want to look at, okay, in the context, meaning in the framework or in the situation um, or in that particular sentence, n n nothing else, like specifically, what's the main idea? What's the, what, what, what's the purpose? Like, why is that sentence being written? What am I supposed to get out of it? That's the crux of comprehension, meaning understanding what it is you're reading. You need to be able to understand what is being communicated to you. So in order to do that, you want to examine the details closely to identify how they relate. In this sentence, you would examine the details of the predicate to figure out how it relates to the subject. Because anything in the predicate is giving you more information about the subject. All right? Anything in the predicate is giving you more information about the subject. So you want to kind of figure out what the relationship is between the two. All right. So now, now if you have, you have <clears throat> again, who, just like if we're doing reading, who, what, when, where, why, and how. So the who or the what would be the subject. Okay. The when, where, why, and how would be the predicate. Okay. So now we want our sentence to be complete. So we know that we're going to start with the complete, we're going to start with the capital letter, and we're going to end with punctuation. All right? We're going to start with the capital letter, and we'll end with punctuation. Start with the capital letter, end with punctuation. What are our punctuation choices? It could be an exclamation point. It could be a question mark, or it could be a period. So a period, a question mark, or exclamation point. All right? Those are the basic endings to a sentence. Now, when it's a period, that means it's a declarative or expository. It just is going to explain or it's just giving information. 
If it's a question or an interrogative sentence, it means it's asking a question. If you ever heard the word interrogation, it means that there's questions or so there's there's some type of sort of information that needs to be given or granted. So that is an interrogatory sentence. Um, or it can be an exclamatory. It means it's something set with excitement. Either it's <gasps> excitement because you're happy or it's excitement because you're angry. Where are my shoes? You know, or I'm so happy to see you. So if a person is reading it, they can't see your face. They can't hear your voice. It has to be able to see what's on the page and say, hmm, what does that mean? Okay. So now let's look at it. All right. Okay, so now, if we look at our sentences, today, right now, we're going to use gravity, all right, we'll use, oh, let me go over this, the, the spelling words, I'm sorry, sweetie, um, so these are our spelling words, we're using the same word list, we're pulling from bridge, gravity, hungry, eclipse, I'm sorry, you can't even see it, so it's bridge, gravity, hungry, eclipse, secret, glance, sorry, glance, laundry, attract, attract, switch, trouble, bridge, gravity, hungry, eclipse, secret, glance, laundry, attract, switch and trouble now remember anytime we come across our spelling words and we're trying to figure out and remember or memorize how we should spell them we look for major major um, keys for decoding so we're going to look for um we'll look for blends we look for long and short vowels um so bridge bridge B R short I D G E Gravity G R gra A short A V I short I T. Remember, whenever Y is at the end of a two syllable word, it sound it makes the E sound. So gravity or a multi syllable word. Sorry, it doesn't just have to be two. If there are multiple syllables, Y is gonna sound like E. If it's one syllable, Y will sound like I. Okay? I'm sorry, my hands are all in the thing. Hungry. Hung. Ha, 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 ha. H at the beginning. Un. Un. U N. G. G. G R. Y. E. Hungry. Okay? Eclipse. 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 So E C L I. P S E E clips E clips secret secret S E C R E T secret glance glance G L A N C E glance laundry laundry so in glance so in secret Let's just go back to Eclipse. There's a long E. So usually, the bossy silent E is at the end of a word, making a vowel say its name. So in Eclipse, that's the case. But sometimes, it's not always the case. Because in Bridge, there's a silent E there. But I is not saying its name. It's making a short vowel sound. So there, that's called an exception. Um, but I don't want to go too far off because we're focusing on writing sentences. But I did want to review the spelling words that we're going to be using in our sentences. Um, secret, secret, secret. So we have a long e. We have the blend of cr, short e t. So s e c r e t, s e c r e t. Mm -hmm. And then we have glance, glance, g l a n c e, g l. A N C E La Andre La Andre L A U N D R Y. So un U N is a blend. 
as is dr. So laundry. Okay? Laundry. And here we have attract. Ah, ah, attract. Now, the interesting thing is you have at and then you have track. So you have two T's. A T T R A C T. So tr, tr, tr. That's coming from a blend, and that's the T R. Tr, a, short A, k, t, attract. Okay? Now we have sw, 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 itch. So sw, S W. I, short I, T, C, H, ch, switch, switch. Then we have trouble, 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 T, R, O, U, B, L, E, okay, trouble. All right, so now, if you look at, uh, so yeah, so those are the words, okay? So now, All right, so now let's write, let's focus on writing our sentences. So now, the goal for this activity is just that we're going to practice writing two or three descriptive sentences. Descriptive meaning, once we know we're going to satisfy the who and the what when we write the subject, because the subject can be a person, place, or thing. If it's a thing, it's a what. If it if it's a thing or a um or a place, it'll more than likely be a what. If it's a who, okay. It's going to be a person. So let's see our first sentence. Let's use a thing. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, let's write this. Our sentence is, uh, our sentence will be, um, we can use um, Leland Melvin, who's an astronaut, um, let's see, Leland Melvin, um, Leland Melvin is the only NFL player to experience life without gravity in outer space. Okay, now that is a very descriptive sentence. I told you who. Who am I talking about? Leland Melvin, right? He's an astronaut. So, um, he's an astronaut who's also a very, very smart man, an engineer and a scientist. So, uh, uh, researcher. So, Leland Melvin, right, is my subject. So, now let's look at my predicate, which is really, really descriptive, right? So, in my predicate, I put all these extra stuff. I put what, when, where, why. So, well, we didn't put when. I didn't put a when, but I put where out of space. Um, and I didn't put why. I did do, I added a who. We answered who, what, when, who, what, when, and where. So of, we used four. Leland Melvin is the only NFL player to experience life without gravity in outer space. I told you where. He's in outer space. It's life, it's now. So experiencing life without a space is what? Um, so who, Leland, what experienced life without gravity? Um, when he went into outer space. So we know, even though it's not specific time, but we know it's when he was out of space because it's not when he's here, um, when he's actually here. So that's kind of where it's in outer space. It's kind of tricky. It's where, it's outer space. Not even tricky. Where is outer space? All right. So we use three. We said who, what, and where. I put word. Who, where? Yeah. Who, what, and where. All right. So I can or but if I wanted to change it, I and I wanted to add a when, 
I could do that by just saying, when Leland Melvin became an astronaut, right? If I wanted, to, if I wanted to change it and make it more descriptive, I could say, when Leland Melvin became an astronaut, comma, he became the only NFL player to experience life without gravity in outer space. So that would have been one more detail I could have added to make my sentence more descriptive. So it's about adding as many facts as possible within the space allotted to give your reader as much information as possible. So if I wanted to change it, I could. And I could say, when Leland Melvin became an astronaut, so then that gives me a time, not when he was actually in the NFL, but after he got out of the NFL and he became an astronaut. So when Leland Melvin became an astronaut, he became the only NFL player to ever experience life without gravity in outer space. Okay, so that's a really, it's a really long sentence, but it's very descriptive and it gives a lot of information. Okay, so that's one way that we could do it. All right, so now let's look at another, let's look at another word. All right, and so this time I'm going to definitely try to put when in it. Um, we could put, um, um, let's say it like this. After dinner, after dinner, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert. Okay, so now. The subject of the sentence, meaning who the sentence is about, is Niaja. Okay, so Niaja is the subject. Now, when? After dinner. All right, so that's another. After dinner. After dinner. So it kind of tells me when after dinner, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert. All right. After dinner, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert. All right. So after dinner tells me when. It tells me what. Hungry for dessert. Okay. All right. So it tells I told you who, told you what, I told you when, and I didn't give you where. You, I could, if I wanted to add where, I could also say, after dinner, um, after dinner at home with her family, that would make it even more descriptive. After dinner at home with her family, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert. Okay, after dinner at home with her family, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert. All right, so those would be all extra details that I can add to make my sentence more descriptive. So. Sometimes, because sometimes as you're getting older, your teacher is going to kind of be like, um, well, tell me a little bit about more of that or why. And so if I wanted to add a why, I could say after dinner with her family, after dinner at home with her family, Niaja is usually hungry for dessert because she has a terrible sweet tooth. That would tell you why. That would tell you who, what, when, where. So you can add all that. Now, essentially... The question is, the sentence is complete as is. The sentence is complete. So you wouldn't necessarily have to add another, um, you wouldn't have to add more information. But if you wanted to make it more descriptive, you could. Okay? All right. So let's do one more sentence. We're at 19 minutes. So we're going to do one more sentence and then we'll, we'll wrap up. And I will do the, um, we're going to wrap up. All right? So. Let's see. Secret. Secret is a noun. So let's say, um, uh, let's see, excuse me. Um, see, um, when planning a surprise. Party, it is important 
to keep all the details a secret so that the guest of honor does not find out. Now, that is a super, super long sentence. But let's look at how we were able to use the five W's to create this comprehensive sentence that gave a lot of information. When planning a surprise party, so that's when, it is important to keep all the details a secret so that the guest of honor does not find out. So the subject of the sentence is surprise party. The what is planning it. And now the other details, it is important to keep all the details a secret so that the guest of honor doesn't find out. I told you why. I told you what you were doing, when. I, well, the what is, well, I told you what you were doing. That's planning a surprise party. The sub who, and not necessarily about who, but it's like the who and the what are kind of like interchangeable. I don't know if, I'm certain there may be another teacher that's like, ah, uh, you know, but it's like um, when planning a surprise party, so it's what, so when, in terms of time, it's when you're planning a party. It's not just all the time, because most of the time people expect you to give them details. If I'm supposed to meet you, because we're going to have dinner, you have to give me the details. But when, meaning when more as a situation, not necessarily a time of day, it's more of a situ, a, a context. When. So that's the win in the context of planning a surprise party, right? It's important to keep, so the, the, the main idea is trying to relate to you that it's important. So that's the what. Okay, so I've given you the when and the what. The who is the, um, the um, and it's almost implied that you, it, it's about you. It's kind of giving you information about you. Because you would be the person that was planning. I already have one. Thank you so much. Um, so when planning a surprise party. So it's kind of an, an implied you kind of thing. So when planning a surprise party. It is important to keep all the details a secret. So that the guest of honor does not find out. Alright. So now. In this sentence. The who or the what. Would be. Um, the surprise party. Alright. Or planning. Who or the what. So planner would be the planner, whoever the event was, would be the, whoever is planning the event. And I could be explaining this terribly wrong, but when planning a surprise party, it is important to keep all the details a secret so that the guest of honor does not find out. So in this sentence, what is the sentence all about? The subject would be planning a surprise party. All right. And the information is it is important to keep all details a secret, all the details a secret so that the guest of honor does not find out. Okay. So. I'm not certain that I that one was definitely not as clear cut, and I could have really, really messed it up. Um, but in terms of being able to provide, in terms of the subject and predicate, it's when planning a surprise party. So that's the when. What are you actually doing? Planning a surprise party. You know, the subject is about the sentence is about planning a surprise party. That's the subject. Planning a surprise party. Um, and it is important to keep all the details a secret. So, yeah, the subject is planning a surprise party. Um, so, it's the who or the what, like what's going on. All right. And so then when, and the other thing is, or I can always say when you are, but you're not, when you are planning, when you are planning a surprise party. So, yeah. So, the implied, so the you is implied. All right. And it's kind of like planning a surprise party. So, the subject of the sentence would be you or the event planner. Um, so it's kind of implied. So if I had to I, I underline the subject, I would still underline planning a surprise party. And then the predicate would be it is important to keep all the details a secret so that the guest of honor does not find out. Now, that's a super, super long sentence. We would only write, usually, we would only write a sentence like that because we're practicing giving the description, giving a de creating a descriptive sentence. But as you get... As you get better and as you, you can leave some details out because the the reader can infer or kind of um, can infer what you mean based on the context of what was provided. So in the sentence. So that is it. The video still ended up being 24 minutes. Um, I should have stopped it at 20, but I kept talking. So 
But um, prayerfully, um, you found something helpful. And hopefully, Daddy's still working with you on um, writing your sentences. I know Miss Brown um, was writing some sentences with you. So um, I hope that all is well. I love you and I miss you dearly. I love and appreciate you. Know that. Always, 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 I love and appreciate you. And I hope you have a blessed day. All right. Take care.